more about things that you may or may not be interested in, but I still think that it's such a privilege that we get education. So I hope you could see um, this time as a privilege and as an opportunity for you to learn and expand your understanding and your wisdom. Um, and I pray that the wisdom will come from God. Um, so before we go to the time of worship, I wanted us to just really center our heart back on Jesus. Let's ask God, Lord, I invite you in my heart. And Lord, if I am distracted right now, I rebuke those distractions in Jesus' name. Let's just ask God to meet us where we are. We are all on different journeys and different seasons. But I believe that God is the Father who can meet us wherever we are. And He's the one willing to meet us in the middle. So let's just pray right now. Let's lift up our voices. right now in this very moment Lord we open our hearts and we we invite you Lord to do something within us Father I pray that as we just posture our hearts before worship Lord would you rid away any distractions on our hearts and in our minds Lord I ask that all of our focus will be on you today that every lyric that we sing will be an act of worship, Lord. Not because we are singing lyrics, Lord. That's not worship. Worship is when our hearts are, are fully just open to giving you all the praise and glory. So God, I believe that it is true worship when we posture our hearts to sing these songs through faith, Lord, and through obedience, um, knowing that you are the one to deliver, you are the one to fight our battles, you are the one, Lord, who loves us more than we can comprehend, God. So Father, at this time, Lord, I ask that you will meet us right where we are. Lord, we are so undeserving of your kindness. We're so undeserving of your grace, God, because we sin every day. Lord, we are sinful beings, and Lord, I know myself, I'm not deserving to be here, but Lord, you, you still choose to call my name every day. And I believe that you're calling our youth students' name every day, even in their weaknesses, even in moments of sin, God. I know you love us because your character doesn't change even when ours does, God. So Lord, we glorify you for everything that you've done and ultimately we glorify you because of who you are because you're a good father to us thank you father open up our hearts for this time of worship in jesus name i pray
empty praise, treasures of faith, never in love. You came along, and you put me back together. Every desire is now satisfied.
give you my heart, give you my soul. I live for you alone, every breath that I take, every moment I God, we praise you for all you have done for us and lift your name on high. Please forgive us of all our sins that we have committed this past week and help us to also forgive others. Thank you for being a gracious God who cares and provides for us according to our needs. Please help us to focus on today's sermon and apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. First, I wanted to say um, it's been a great time knowing you and getting to know you more, especially you know throughout our Arizona mission trip that we had um, was it a year ago. Um, well, I hope you have a great future. Um, I know you finally got to get a new job, and I hope that this new job will bring you know more blessings to your family and that God will be with you and continually keep you safe. So we thank you. Um, this youth group thanks you, and I thank you so much for being our director for this youth ministry.
유니창 집사님 그동안 저희 유스트 그룹을 섬겨주셔서 너무 감사합니다. 2년 전 저희가 처음 유스 모임에 왔을 때 리출이 돼서 집사님 만난 기억이 납니다. 항상 유스 아이들을 사랑해 주시고 언제든지 그 자리에서 묵묵히 보이지 않는 곳에서 이 유스 그룹을 섬겨주신 집사님 수고에 너무 감사드립니다. 하나님께서 열어주신 새로운 길에서 하나님의 은혜를 누리고 또 그곳에서도 어, 이곳 뉴스를 섬기셨던 것처럼 주님의 교회를 섬겨주실 거라고 믿습니다. 축복합니다. 감사합니다. Hi, Director Yoon. First of all, I just want to say thank you so much for serving as our youth director. I know it wasn't easy and um, I just feel so thankful that you were so engaged and that you just loved on each member of the youth and also the teachers so well. Um, I know that wherever you go, God will lead you to the best Um, opportunities um, and community around you and so no matter where you are I hope you know that LC is your family and that we will always be supporting you um, so we'll miss you so much and we hope you the best 집사님 그동안 뉴스 부장 집사님으로 함께 동역해 주셔서 감사합니다 그동안 수고 많이 하셨습니다 집사님 덕분에 저와 그리고 교사들 그리고 우리 학생들의 어, 든든한 버팀목이 되어 주셔서 감사합니다. 수련회면 수련회, 단기 선교면 단기 선교, 항상 함께 해주셔서 감사합니다. 떠나 보내는 마음은 아쉽지만 좋은 일로 떠나시는 것이니 어, 함께 기도하며 그곳에서 하나님의 최선의 인도하심을 위해서 기도하겠습니다. 집사님도 저희를 위해서 계속해서 기도해 주시길 바랍니다. 그동안 함께 해주셔서 감사합니다. 제가 얘기하면 되나요? 아, 어, 제가 먼저 얘기하겠습니다. Yeah. Yeah. Some of you are surprised because at the beginning of the video it looks like I'm leaving, <laughs> but it's not. So our director Yoon is leaving uh, at the end of this month for his job. So he has to move to other city. So I think this is the last Sunday for him to attend our service. So I ask him to do farewell. So, dear to you. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, it's almost three years since I started watching you guys grow spiritually and physically. I have really enjoyed it. And here are my last words. to you guys all. Uh, first, to the student. I understand you teenagers in middle school and high schools are having a hard time in relationship with your parents. If not now, I'm sure you are later. Who do you think would sacrifice themselves to help and protect you when you meet difficulties, like a falling into a deep pit like uh, Joseph's in the Bible. It is your parents, not your friends. They are more like our Lord Jesus Christ in their heart. So I ask you to just listen and respect them. Uh, Bible says God will bless you when you do it. And secondly, to the teachers, I really appreciate your service and effort. Uh, without your help, I'm sure Pastor Daniel can run this ministry with such a success. Uh, this is the best youth ministry I, ever, I have ever experienced in my life. Uh, please keep it up that way for, for the futures. And I wish all of you do well and keep yourself safe and healthy in this uncertain time. God bless you. Bye. <웃음> 네, 집사님 감사합니다. 어, 이 시간 can we pray for him all together? Uh, even if it's just really short, in one minute. Uh, let's pray for him and pray for his safety and health and uh, the blessings from heaven to his family.
and I will finish this prayer uh, with my prayer. Uh, let's pray for our director Yoon. 하나님 감사합니다. 우리 유니청 부장 입사님을 보내주셔서 함께 이렇게 유사역 감당하게 하시면 감사하고 하나님 이제 다른 도시로 떠나는 이 발걸음을 주님 축복하시고 하나님 그곳에서의 생활과 직장과 그들의 가정을 하나님께서 복내려 주옵소서 어딜 가든지 주님 섬기는 일을 멈추지 않고 그의 손이 그의 발이 주님 일로 바빠지게 하시고 그래야 또 하나님을 깊이 경험하고 하나님을 더욱더 사랑하는 그 자리에 설수 있도록 하나님 축복하여 주옵소서 우리 그동안 함께 있으면서 우리를 배, 위해 베풀어 주신 그 모든 수고와 헌신을 우리가 갚을 수 없사오니 하나님께서 갚아 주옵소서 하나님 감사합니다 우리 윤희창 부장 집사님을 우리 가운데 보내주셔서 함께 동역할 수 있게 해주신 거 감사합니다. 우리 윤희창 집사님의 그동안의 수고와 우리를 위하여 베풀어 주신 그 사랑을 우리가 갚을 수는 없으나 하나님께서 기억하시고 그 가는 발걸음 위에 하나님께서 복으로 함께하여 주옵소서. 그리고 특별히 어딜 가든지 주님을 섬기는 그 손과 발이 되어서 하나님을 섬기는 일을 멈추지 않고 하나님의 나라와 그 영광을 위하여서 남은 여생을 보내는 우리 집사님 될수 있도록 하나님 함께하여 주옵소서. 그 가정 가운데 그의 새로운 직장 가운데 하나님의 복이 함께할 줄로 믿사오며 살아계신 예수님의 이름으로 기도하였습니다. 아멘. Okay. Uh, can you wave 감사합니다. our hands? 네, can you wave our hands? 감사합니다, 집사님. Okay. Uh, our director Yun is leaving at the end of this month. Uh, so please pray for him. And I'm sure, I'm pretty sure that he is going to pray for our ministry. And okay, thank you for being with us. Okay, let's open our Bible. Today it's going to be Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Let me read it for you, or I will read it. Uh, you uh, read it at your place. Ready, go. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So how are you today? Good? Very good? Okay, thumbs up? Okay, thank you. So last Friday uh, was the uh, 911. Uh, 2001, there was a terrorism in the United States and it was the 19th uh, year uh, since it happened and I still remember when I saw it uh, where I saw it and what I saw it even though it's 19 years ago some of you uh, it happened before some of you were born it's 19 years ago but i remember i was in the military service and it was my vacation so i went to huga i was on the taxi and that taxi had a tv screen and i saw the the flight crashed into the building world trade center and i asked taxi driver wow what is the title of this movie i'm gonna watch it during my vacation and the taxi driver said, no, it's, it's for real, man. And I, I was worried about my vacation because if something happens, the army cancels my vacation. So I worried about my vacation so much, but it didn't cancel. And I still remember. And as I uh, read uh, some of the articles about 911, I found out some new things. Some of you already know it, but I just knew that two flights were hijacked and they crashed into the World Trade Center. Uh, but I found out there were four flights were hijacked. So two went to the uh, World Trade Center and one went to the Pentagon and uh, it destroyed the part of the Pentagon building. And another one went headed to the White House. But in, uh, in the flight, there was uh, some fight. So it uh, didn't achieve its purpose and it uh, went down somewhere. So the White House didn't uh, get any damage. So this terrorism against the innocent uh, civilians 
it broke a piece at once totally. Almost 3,000 people were dead and 6,000 people were injured. And because of this act, so the U.S. Uh, between U.S. and Iraqi and the, between U.S. and Afghanistan, the peace war broke at once. Uh, if this terrorism broke the peace between uh, U.S. and Iraqi or Afghanistan, what could break the peace between God and us? Of course, it is sin. The, uh, uh, what does the Romans repeat from the beginning of the chapter 5? The Romans, through Romans, Paul repeats uh, the weight of sin. And the sin broke the relationship between uh, we and God. So we were under the wrath of God. We were under the wrath of God. And this sinful nature is in us. So we sin every day, not because we become sinner, but because we sin. Let me repeat. We have this sinful nature from the beginning, from the birth, so that we sin. So we were under the wrath of God. God gave us the law, and the law teaches us what, is the sin and the sin becomes our tutor so it leads us to the christ because he teaches us what is the sin and it teaches us we are miserable beings so we needed somebody who can save us so it leads us to christ that is the kind of the review uh review up to last sunday so my sermon title today is this what is the next step? We were sinner and it leads us to Christ. And now, finally, we have a Christ. So by faith, we will be forgiven and we will be saved through the blood of Jesus Christ. So it is not by works, not by the law. It is by the faith. It was the, the sermon point uh, up to last Sunday. So if we are justified, and if we became innocent, if we are forgiven sinners now, what is the next step? The f My first point is this. We have peace with God. We have peace with God. Romans chapter 5 verse 1, it's our verse today. It starts with, therefore. Therefore, it introduces uh, the, the new conclusion uh, based on what Paul has said. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, so let's say you are justified through faith. What's the next step? It's this. You have to know you have, you have peace with God. Peace with God. And some of you misunderstand the walk with Jesus Christ, the journey of our faith. Some people think it is like a life of monk, sudosum. So we have to lead the ascetic life, limiting every lust or controlling, maintain ourselves in an extremely limited situation. It is not. The walk with Jesus Christ, it is not the ascetic life. It is a having peace with God. It is having peace with God. Uh, just suppose that you are, uh, you go to your house and you meet your father and mother. And it is weird if you fear your God. Uh, if you fear your father or mother, and if you are, you're so nervous, you can't even talk to your mom and dad because they are too scary, too fearful. Isn't it weird? We cannot say this is a normal family. God is too. When we were under the wrath of God, 
we have to fear. We have to tremble. But now we have peace with God. It means we have now relationship uh, with God. So God wants you to have peace with Him. I remember in my high school days, I was a very small guy, a very short, one of the shortest uh, students in my class. And I have one uh, classmate, and he is short too, but he was so good at basketball. I think I, I shared this story before. And he was short like me, but he was so good at basketball. So I wanted to be a very close friend to him. I kind of admire him. So I liked him. So I want to be the best friend with him. So I started playing basketball. And I still remember that feeling, ah, oh, that friends, that I, I want to close to him. He is so popular and I want to close to him. And I think you have the same experience too. And can you imagine God has a heart. God has a heart to be best friends with you, to be close to you, to listen from you, to have a chat with you because he already forgave our sin and he we have a peace with him. I want you to understand this God's heart more and more. He doesn't need to be close with us because he's God. He doesn't need anything. He doesn't need a friend. But he wants to be close to you because he loves us. That is his heart. If you understand <coughs> this heart, why don't you open your heart more? Why don't you open your heart more and be uh, close to him? If you understand it's God's heart. God gives his hand to you first. And second point is this. Peace. Now, the Paul says we have a peace with God, but peace never comes from outside. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, since we have justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And the word peace in here, it has the same concept with a, a Hebrew shalom. The shalom means peace. And the Paul used intentionally this word, the peace. And on Saturday morning, uh, you have a, a boba tea in front of you. Uh, you are in front of the computer screen. Uh, you're about to play your favorite video game. You don't have a school class. You don't have any assignments. You don't have anything to do. You just you can just enjoy your day. And your heart is so peaceful. That doesn't describe the word shalom. The shalom does not mean just the physically, mentally peaceful. Uh, there is a one king in ninth century. His name is Abdullah the third. He was the one of the po most powerful king in 19th century, and his army was so strong, and he had uh, countless armies, and he had a. Uh, 3,321 wives, you know, if uh, he's one of his wife wants to see her husband, she has to wait uh, 10 years, okay? Three, more, 3,321 wives, and he had 616 uh, children. He had the money, he had the army, he had the wives, he had the reputation, he had power he had everything but at the last day right before he died this is what he said only 14 days one for only 14 days i had a peace in my mind even though you had the money you have a money power 
reputation, strongest army, so many wives, pleasure. He had only 14 days for his entire life. He, were to he, he had a peace in his mind. And I know you have a, a you know the writer Hemingway. He lived such a good life, writer. He had he went to fishing, he went to uh, hunting, he wrote some novels, is the phenomenon novels, and he uh, had a girlfriend and he had a vacation house uh, near to the beach. But at the uh, end of his life, he couldn't, uh, in his loneliness, in the vanity, he shoot himself and he committed suicide. He had a pleasure, he had a reputation, he had the money, but he didn't have shalom. So comfort and shalom, the peace is different. I will tell you again, the comfort and the peace is totally different. And this peace, shalom, mentally, physically, spiritually peaceful, the whole being peaceful, this is what it means, shalom. It does not come from outside. It does not come from the conditions, but it comes from inside. I, uh, I look, organized my desk and I found one notebook. So I read it again and one of the page and it said, uh, 2018 and 2017, it didn't uh, had a year, but there was uh, some memo from the retreat. One of the retreat speakers said this, we are not the thermometers, we are the thermostats. So I read it again, we are not a th thermometer, we are thermostats. What does some thermometer does? It measure the temperature and it, if just imagine that I'm the thermometer, it measures the temperature and you change yourself and it indicates the temperature. But what does thermostat do? It measures the temperature. It's the same thing, but it activates the device to cool down or to heat it up. It changes its situation. And I think that this is a really good metaphor about what I'm talking about right now. The true peace, the shalom comes from inside. So you should not be the thermometer, you should be the thermostat. That's what I'm talking about. I know in teenager, during teenager, your hormones are so active. So sometimes your emotions and your feelings, you cannot control. You want to act, be angry at somebody. You want to yell at your mom sometimes because I did it before. And you want to blame somebody else. It's not my fault. It's because of you. It's not my fault. It's because of something else. You want to blame. You want to complain. You want to yell at somebody. And I know it can happen. But you have power not to do it because we are forgiven sinners and we have that power through Jesus Christ. So we have a choice not to do it. And you have a power to maintain your shalom inside of you. So the spirit, your, your circumstances, your situation doesn't give you shalom your money, reputation, the college job, anything else will be able to give you shalom. The shalom only comes from inside when we stand on the truth. When we truly understand our status, we are forgiven sinners. We are God's children, not under the wrath of God. We, are, we have peace with God. 
So you should rebuke all these feelings and emotions. I know it is hard times right now, all day long, online classes, and even more screen times because of the assignments, and you don't have any entertainments outside with your friends. So I know it's frustrating. And I heard some of the uh, officer in CDC says it's gonna be, even though we have a vaccination next year, but this pandemic might continue until the end of next year. So it's some of the news situation, it's a frustrating, but you don't need to be discouraged. You don't need to be depressed because we have power. We have a power to not to do it. And we have this peace inside of us because of Jesus Christ. So you should rebuke all the lies, emotions, and feelings in the name of Jesus. And I challenge you today, this week and next week, or the rest of this year, if you have decided something, and if you have uh, some important things to finish, okay, I'm gonna do it after the pandemic. I'm gonna do it uh, when the school opens again. No, you should start right now. You have power to do it because God wants to be close to you and God wants to have a relationship with you and God wants to help you and you already have this power in you through our faith, which was offered by Jesus Christ. Let's all pray. Father, uh, this is a really hard time. I know some of us are struggling with our mental health. Some of us are struggling with the schoolwork or the daily schedules, but Lord, we know that we, our status has changed. We are not under the wrath of God. We have peace with God. I, we will stand uh, on this truth and we will, uh, uh, we will act upon this truth. We, we know that we have a power not to blame or get uh, mad at somebody or complain, but we will glorify you with all the acts that we do uh, every day. Lord, please help us and your spirit. I know you are with us right now. Help us, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Sunday service. It's good to see you guys. I see a lot of our alumni, or not a lot, two of our alumni are here. So hello, it's so good to see you. Um, I just have a few announcements. First is please turn on your cameras. I know we've been announcing this every Sunday. Um, it's not, you know, it's we're not, I mean, yes, we're trying to make you a little uncomfortable only because we want to keep you accountable. So even if you don't feel comfortable turning on your camera, maybe you could practice and try to turn it on during small group. Um, we just want to make sure that we're all, you know, sitting up and having a heart postured for worship. Um, you know, like you wouldn't show up to Sunday service like on your bed or in pajamas or not having brushed your teeth, right? Like you would show up to Sunday service in excellence before God because you want to give him your best and your honest worship, right? And so just like that, like I just want to encourage you all to Give God your most excellent worship on Zoom. And that's why we ask you to turn on your camera. So I still see tons and tons of people that have your cameras off. Lots of high schoolers. So let's be a good example for our middle schoolers. Next, please attend small groups. Um, I send you guys to breakout rooms right away. So it hasn't been a problem. Please do stick around and attend small groups. Next, we have Tuesday Bible studies um, with Pastor Daniel every Tuesday. So please show up this Tuesday in this Zoom room, I believe, and it will be at eight o'clock. And we also have no more Instagram challenges. Um, those ended, but I hope you guys had a good time. We'll think of something fun to do with you all. 
And then Sunday service begins at 11.15. Please come in by 11. We'll have the rating room open. Um, so you could just join in early. And lastly, we have a in-person event in October. The date is October 10th. It's a Saturday. Time is to be determined, but it will be in the middle of the day to the evening. So sometime between like four to seven, it will be between there. So October 10th, put it on your calendars. Make sure you have a ride. Uh, the, we're going to be at church. We're going to be in the parking lot. Bring camping chairs. Um, what else to prepare? We'll give you more information soon, but we're so excited. Basically, we're going to do a praise and prayer night all together, and um, we're just so excited. So be sure to put it on your calendar. We want everyone to show up. We're having our, um, our English ministry college of young adults are all coming to. We're just so excited to gather at church. If you have any questions, please talk to your small group leaders and we'll try to answer for you. And I think that's it. Back to you, Pastor Daniel. Okay. Um, uh, teacher Stella, uh, her grandmother passed away in South Korea an hour ago. So she is not able to uh, lead a small group today. So I'm going to be in Stella's group. So you guys are with me today. I hope you like it. And please pray for the comfort for Stella's family. Let's pray. 이제는 우리 주 예수 그리스도의 무한하신 은혜와 하나님의 크고 굳진하신 사랑과 성령님의 감화감도 교통하시니 하나님과 화평을 누리기로 결단하며 돌아가는 우리 모든 학생들과 선생님들 머리 위에 가정 위에 이제부터 영원토록 함께하기를 간절히 축원하옵나이다. 아멘. Okay, guys, have a fun and good a small group meeting.